Hey everyone, this is Pastor Teresa at Beaver Ridge United Methodist Church. And I want to thank you for joining me on this Tuesday. It's rainy, it's a little chilly out there, but it's still a beautiful day. Thank you for joining us for our Tuesday um, Tea Time devotions at 2. I was running a little bit late, but um, I, I'm glad to be here with you all now. So, we are still in the mm-hmm. Easter season, and we just are so thankful that... We don't have just one day to celebrate Easter, but, well, we celebrate Easter all year long, right? But in the church, on the church calendar, we, we celebrate in the season of Easter until Pentecost, which is about four more weeks from now. But, uh, so we can continue to tell the story of Jesus' resurrection and what does that mean to us? And what can we learn from it and how can we, um, grow closer to God and, and, uh, deepen our, um, our roots in our discipleship with the Lord. So today I want to read from uh, John and talking about when the disciples, when Jesus appeared to the disciples. He had already been risen from the tomb, so he was out of the tomb. The women saw that the tomb was empty. Mary had an experience with uh, Jesus himself when she thought he was the gardener. And she runs back and she tells uh, the disciples and two of them run to go see and make sure, did this really happen? It did. They saw the tomb was empty, but none of them were really sure what did that mean. So as we start our story today, it starts from John chapter 20 and verse 19. On the evening, so it's later that day, it's it's at the evening time on that Sunday, uh, when the disciples were together, they were gathered in the upper room and the doors were locked for the fear of the Jews. In other words, they were afraid that the Pharisees, the religious leaders may come after them next and uh, crucify them, have them beaten, uh, tortured or whatever. So they were afraid. They didn't know. And what had really happened to Jesus's body at this time, they're not sure. So they would be doing exactly what I would be doing hiding out. They're in there. The door is locked. And I love this part. Jesus came and stood among them. No walls, no locked doors is going to keep Jesus out from being with his friends. That tells us something about what our resurrected bodies are going to look like one day. Uh, Jesus is the first resurrected body, and uh, he's able to come and be with them. Just come right through. And um, So what does he say? The first thing he says to them is peace be with you. He cares enough for them. He knows that they're stressed beyond stressed. The events that have unfolded in the past few days have been horrific, very disturbing. They lost their best friend, their their rabbi, their lord, their their leader. Is they, and they don't really know what this means with an empty tomb. And so they are afraid and they are grief stricken as, as anyone would be. And the first thing that Jesus goes is he's taking care of their emotional needs. He's coming, he's coming to take care of them. Peace be with you. I think the opposite of fear is peace. So he, he gives them peace. He's taking care of them. He has compassion for them. He takes care of them. So after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. You know, sometimes it's hard for us to hear a good news or a message or to to really process what's going on. If we're still bound up in fear, worry, or grief, You've probably been there before when you experienced the loss of something that was very dear to you or the death of someone that you love deeply in the middle of the group. We don't always uh, process things very well. So here Jesus comes. He said, I'm giving you your peace because I need you to process that I am really here. See my hands, see my side. They had this personal experience with the Lord right then in that moment. And so out of that personal experience and connection with with Jesus, they are overjoyed. They know that it is him. And again, Jesus said, peace be with you. They needed more of his peace. I needed more peace today. I can tell you that (laughs) earlier today I was asking the Lord, uh, God, I need some more of your peace. Well, we need it, don't we? Peace comes from God. And so Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. He needs them to have peace. He needs them to to, um, be able to uh, set aside 
their grief and their fear and, and all the emotional stuff that keeps them paralyzed and locked behind the doors. Um, he needs them to let that go. And that is the healing from peace that comes over them. Because why? He says, because I'm sending you. In other words, we ne I need you to get out there and share the good news. I've got places for you to go and people to see. And, and for you to share this, you've got to let go of the grief. The longer you stay bound up in grief or anger or fear or whatever those negative emotions are, the less you're able to get out there and enjoy God's adventure. So he's setting them free, this emotional and spiritual freedom, so they can get out there and enjoy what God has for them next. And with that... He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Man, the Holy Spirit is what empowers us to do so many things on behalf of the Lord. There are so many things when I think, I'm supposed to do that? God, I don't have the gifts. I don't have the skills or the resources. Why me? And then I realize that I have the power of the Holy Spirit. And if God has called me to it, I think I can at least step into that and see what the Lord is doing. And so that's what he's asking them here. He's like, I'm going to send you, but I'm sending you with the Holy Spirit. And he breathes that on them. Peace be with you. And then he gives them a gift, another gift. So he's given them a peace and he's breathed his Holy Spirit. Receive it. That's another gift. And here's the third gift. The gift is forgiveness. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Wow. They get to choose what they will do with that gift. Now, we all know that they are very, um, they have to be angry towards the Pharisees right now and Pilate and all of those who were involved in crucifying uh, Jesus. There would be a, this sense of, um, indignation and and like they want justice don't we all want justice and and they would want to see those who had hurt their loved one to be punished as we all do when we see someone who's hurt or when we're hurt don't we want to see that justice coming but we don't always get that so what do we get well we get we get the gift of forgiveness and he's saying to him, you choose, you choose who you're going to forgive. And if they're, if you forgive them, then they're forgiven. And, and if you don't, then they're not forgiven. But this gift though, see, as we know about forgiveness, here's what we know about forgiveness. Forgiveness doesn't do away with the consequences of what someone has done. It doesn't remove the fact that what they did was wrong. What it does is forgiveness is the gift that when you give it, it gives you the gift back in that it sets you free. The work that he is doing in that room is all about freedom. Freedom from fear and anger and depression and um, uh, grief. So he's setting them free. He's doing this work because he knows what's going to come next. And they're going to need to be set free and, and not sit around and, and hold on to the. You remember the time that Jesus was crucified? He needs them to tell the story so that people get beyond the cross to the grave and beyond that and know that we love and serve a risen Savior. So he's giving them this gift of forgiveness. That's designed to set them free if they can forgive the the um rabbi the pharisees and the those religious leaders if he can forgive if they can forgive pontius pilate if they can forgive herod if they can forgive all these people then they're going to be able to minister to everyone which christ died on the cross for everyone right not just the people we like not just for us, but for everyone. And that includes our enemies. So he's giving them the gift and the tools that they are going to need. Peace, Holy Spirit, and the gift of forgiveness. In order for them to leave that locked room, but also so that they don't stay locked up in a prison in their own hearts. Make sense? So that they're set free here too when they walk out of that room and they go where Jesus is sending them. 
that they are free. They're free in here. And they can follow him joyfully. That's the message I want to leave with you today. What locked door are you behind? What has kept you behind a locked door? What keeps you afraid or um, in grief or anger? What is holding you? God wants to set us free. That's so why he gives the peace and he gives the Holy Spirit and he gives the gift of forgiveness. So I'm going to continue to pray on that today. I actually needed this message today, which is why I'm sharing this with you for devotions. It's always a process and a journey, isn't it? But we don't do it alone. We do it with one another. And we certainly do it with God. So wherever you find yourself, whatever locked room you find yourself behind, may you have the courage to open the door, take the gifts that God has given you, and go boldly forth into the adventure that God has called you to. And it is an adventure. And you're going to be blessed. And the world is going to be blessed. So I hope this message has been helpful today and has special meaning for you. It has for me. And so thank you for letting me share that. Uh, tomorrow night is Wednesday and we have our Wednesday night program at 545. So join me for barbecue and all the side dishes that go along with it. And then on Friday, we're having a youth fundraiser for spaghetti. Um, the kids are raising some money uh, to get uh, the cabin for resurrection for next January. So even if you don't have tickets, it's fine. We got plenty of food. Come on. Or you can message Bailey and tell her. But that's what's happening on Friday. And then this Sunday, I have a special friend, Chaplain Randy Tingle, who I serve with at Fort Sanders Hospital. He is going to be coming and preaching, joining me on Sunday because next week is National Healthcare uh, Workers Week. It's National Nurses Week. And I want us to celebrate all all of the healers in in our community and in our families and in our church. So while we're going to be having communion and we'll be praying for healing, we want to thank the hands that God has used to bring healing into our world and in our life. So don't miss those things. Come and join me. Let's continue on in the Easter season and celebrate. Christ is risen. Amen.